Welcome to this video. My name is Pedro Rodrigues Ribeiro. I'm a psychologist from Portugal. And today I would like to introduce to you, as a key figure of hypnosis and psychotherapy, James Braid. Now, James Braid is considered to be the father of hypnosis and one of the, um, the important individuals that really um, that really presented hypnosis for the first time and popularized it. Um, James Braid was a Scottish physician, ophthalmologist, ophthalmologist I think, an eye doctor, that uh, was born in well, uh, in the 16th, th th 16th or the 17th century. A long time ago. Uh, as a physician, James Braid believed, uh, didn't believe on certain approaches like, for example, mesmerism that was very, uh, in, uh, very into popular, uh, into popular um, publications and popular, uh, uh, popular demonstrations. Uh, in those days, mesmerism was not really credited, credited as a um, therapeutic approach and a very credible scientific approach. Uh, we are talking in the time that uh, Mesmer was debunked, but he, he died a long time, uh, a lot of years uh, since James Braid. Uh, mesmerism was utilized as an entertainment act uh, by artists and entertainers in popular fairs and shows. So really, uh, Braid thought that mesmerism was not real and was only an act. And he was convinced by seeing a lot of demonstrations about mesmerism, especially in the entertainment and uh, and fair and fair uh, shows. In one of those occasions, uh, Braid um, convinced, or he was able to convince one of the artists to um, to give it, to give his uh, permission for Braid to examine. A subject a mesmerized subject so in a private setting uh, th that artist mesmerized someone and after the the mesmeric induction braid uh, examined the subject and what and what he concluded was that the person was not uh, faking it something truly uh, was there a change in his state uh, and his physiology. Uh, the person wasn't very responsive. Uh, he, he would manage certain stimuli like, for example, the sensations of pain but also and discomfort, but also strange movements that he had in his, in his eyes with his pop uh, with his eyes closed so what is known as the REM movement Braid thought that um, something had occurred for the for uh, for the changes of that state he wasn't convinced about the mesmeric hypothesis or the mesmeric um, justification so uh, he started to work in research and what, and what he found was that the a state of focused attention in one idea, one sensation or one behavior did generate all those physiological uh, changes and, he, uh, and that state could be created. Uh, he called that monodeism, 
the the concept of one focusing his attention on one idea, emotion or behavior. Armed with that information, Braid uh, created a process that is considered the first really hypnotic induction, uh, the eye fixation induction. So what Braid would do is that he would put uh, something shiny like for example a candle or a metal coin or something uh, 45 nearly 45 degrees up from the eyesight and uh, his instructions to the patient was that he focused all of his attention in one spot in that object uh, and as the person was focusing his attention on that spot, uh, Braid would suggest it, uh, that his eyes were getting tired, were getting heavy, and and someone and the patient uh, would had the need to close his eyes and to go inside or get some or go to sleep. Uh, really, that was the first uh, really hypnotic induction that that James Braid created. Braid thought that the changes that the focused state produced was really neurological. So the brain or certain areas of the brain activated so that those changes those cognitive and also phys physiological changes happen. Nowadays, we know that from uh, research with um, uh, PETs, MRIs and those kind of techniques, we can see the, the difference on, on the brain waves and the different areas that, um, that are activated when a hypnotic induction is um, is um, when a, when a hypnotic induction is used, uh, so nowadays we know what braid uh, thought it would uh, it would happen. The idea of neuro hypnotism and hypnotism. Uh, started from Braid and also other people and those words were transformed into hypnosis the word hypnosis although uh, although Braid contributed to that name he soon regretted because hypnosis as a word as an uh, as an origin from the, the Greek word hypnos. Hypnos was the Greek god of sleep and we know that hypnosis is not sleep, something that Braid already discovered in, in his research. But unfortunately hypnosis um, developed as a popular word as a popular term that uh, everyone used, so it was very difficult to braid to um, to change that word to monodeism, for example. So hypnosis was created, uh, as we all know know it. You might think, but. Pedro, in what sense does the work and the notion of monodeism contribute to psychotherapy? Well, it's really easy to think about it, because if we think about the cognitive processes of um, focusing our awareness in a one idea, or um, one sensation, or one emotion, we are truly accessing some form of a, of a state, a state that can be very similar to hypnosis. 
uh, we can transform different states into a, a hypnotic process. For example, we can change the relaxation response into a hypnotic process. We can change um, a mindfulness process into an hypnotic process. We can integrate uh, mindfulness with hypnosis because they have one thing in common that is uh, the cognitive processes of uh, focus awareness. So in mindfulness but also in hypnosis we start as a a focused, a, a focused attention spam, focused attention state. So, in that sense, the idea that Braid uh, first introduced is something that we can utilize in psychotherapy. When we do uh, guided imagery, when we do uh, relaxation training, when we do Briefing techniques, briefing techniques, yeah, brief, brief, sorry for my pronunciation. So, when we do all those things, we are focusing someone's attention in an idea, a thought, a process. So, we are producing monodeism. But also, when we when we talk to someone and that person, that patient, is totally focused on what we are saying. So it's a, a, an interesting concept, a very useful concept in, in psychotherapy, but also a very useful concept in, um, in research. In that sense, James Braid is an important figure not only in the field of hypnosis, because he was one of the fathers of hypnosis, the transition between mesmerism and hypnosis, and his ideas can be very valuable in the field of psychotherapy. As I'm closing this video, I would like to thank you for listening if you like this, uh, the, this, uh, these themes, this issue, this com uh, if you like uh, all this stuff, please excuse me, I'm a little tired. If you like all those, all these kind of things about psychotherapy and hypnosis, please subscribe and share. Leave your comments. I will. I will read them, and I will respond to everyone individually. Uh, I would like to wish you a nice day, a happy day, a safe day, and I see you next time.